Hello again. Based on our last program, yeah, I want to to show you something which might be necessary or might you might find useful. The thing is, a lot of a lot of uh, automated systems work step by step. Yeah? So this means, in a first step, something is happening. If this has been finished. A second step is executed and then a third and a fourth and so on up to whatever yeah so step by step we are walking through the the execution of the of the automated program yeah. that's usual usual and then i now want to show you what uh how to program this yeah in c plus plus as an example, I want to do this, to have this approach for the last task you had to fulfill, you know, the button press, turn on, second button press, turn off the LED. I want to program this with a step logic, okay? Maybe an unusual attempt, but it shows you know the problem, you have solved the issue, uh, you know... Uh, I don't have to explain something, we exactly know what to do. Uh, so I will show you this. Yeah. First of all, if I want to do things step by step, yeah, I would need to memorize in which step am I, of course. Yeah. So this is why I'm introducing A static int variable, remember, static means it will not be deleted, it remembers what last loop happened, yeah? And I will call this current step. Okay, and in the big, ah, in the beginning it should be zero. This here is also, I mean, it's working, yeah? But we could take all this stuff here, yeah, and simply add it over here. Then the program will get shorter. That's perfectly fine because if it's not static, this will be uh, new anyway. Yeah, As, on a static variable, this would not work. But on the uh, on the local standard local variable, I can define the variable and directly assign a value to it. This is happening here. Okay. So, how do I distinguish between the simple steps? Of course, I could write if current step is gleich if current step equals zero, do something. Well, else if current step, pa 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 pa. Ah. It's working, okay. However, there is a, a statement which might be more suitable for this. Yeah, there is a switch statement. Switch, and then we have to define current step, the variable. Yeah. And this switch, we can now give different cases. Yeah. So one, one case is the default case case default yeah. if the current step is something and one thing is for instance case zero yeah. in case current step is zero we will execute our program starting here in case it is not zero we are going to default we can define more cases than one case one case 2, and so on. Okay, so you need to know also that I will press a lot of enters here. In case current step is 0, we will start executing here. In case current step is 1, we will start execute here. However, in case current, current step is 0, we will start execute here, but we, would, we will not stop here. here. We will run through everything. If we want the program 
to stop, we have to write a break. Okay, break is breaking. So this is the usual, the usual thing how it looks like because usually you do not like uh, that something, something is is executed if you are in a different step. Yeah. Okay, step number zero. Yeah. First step. First step. Uh, what should happen in the first step? We are waiting for the LED should be turned off, right? So I will take this command here. Say okay, LED is turned off. But in case the button is pressed, yeah, I add one value to the current step. So we turn it off. In case the button is pressed, I, we say current step plus one. So current step was zero. Now current step is one. Next time, next loop, we will not start here. We will start here. Okay. So we know we if we are in the first, uh, we are if we execute the first step and in the second step, we will come to here. And what we have to do here is we have to turn on the LED because we receive the button press. Yeah. I will now delete this if statement below. This is not, this I do not learn, no longer need. Oh, maybe I should save it under a different name. Button memory, I call it button memory. Back. Ooh, maybe. I will also increase the number. Okay. What is ending this step? Yeah? If we release, if we release the button again. Yeah? So I will just copy this and say if not button state. So if we are not pressing the button anymore, then let's go to the third step, to the next step. Okay. So first step, wait for button press. If button press, turn on LED and wait for button to be released. Then we are here in the third step. Okay. In the third step, of course, we are waiting. We are waiting. Uh, well, that the, the LED should still light. Yeah. But we are waiting for the button. Yeah. This is the third step. We are waiting for the next button press. And so, coming up on the fourth step, yeah, coming up on the fourth step, break, yeah, we should turn it off again, this LED. Yeah, I will copy this one because copy and paste is great. You don't have to type too much. Yeah. Turn it off the LED because the button was pressed the second time. And now we wait until <clears throat> the button is released, but now we don't have to say current step plus plus, we have to reset it to zero. Okay, and <coughs> if the current step is something else, then, then, uh, if something else, then we do nothing because then there would be a failure. Okay, so first step, wait for the button press, no light, LED. Second step, Wait for the button release, but LED is highlighting. Third step, LED is lighting. Wait for the button press. Fourth step, LED is turned off. Wait for the button release. Then we are again here. Wait, LED is turned off and wait for the button press. Poo. So this should actually work. Okay. Let's see if this is working. I'm going to download. Let's see what is happening here. Turned off. Perfect. Yeah. Press the button. Ah, turned on. Wonderful. Wonderful. Release. Still turned on. Okay, 50% of our task is already fulfilled. Now, press again. 
uh, release, uh huh, press, uh huh. Okay, 50% of our task is fulfilled, at least. Uh, why is this? Why is this happening? Huh? huh? So we have to look into the code. Yeah. Issue is we cannot look inside this thing. We cannot look. We cannot see what is happening inside there. Yeah. So it may be uh, wishful that we can have some status output or something like this to see where are we? Where are we? Yeah? Where did it go wrong? Yeah. Where? Where? Where could it possibly go wrong? And you will for sure run into an issue like this. So there is a possibility of some output, generating some output. There is the possibility of turning on a serial monitor. So we are connected with the PC. There is the serial connection, the USB connection. And we can use this uh, serial connection, this USB connection, to communicate and to print something, give us information. Okay. So, here I could read through the code and think about it. Maybe some of you already noticed what's wrong, but I, I'm going to show you how to make some outputs. Yeah. So, there is this object, serial object. Yeah. So you have to type in serial, and as you see, it's written in fat red language, so it must be important. Yeah. First thing I need to do on the Arduino side, if I want to write something on the serial output, I have to call the begin. Yeah. And then I will have to tell how many signs per second I want to tell. I choose 9600. That's a pretty common, yeah, pretty common so-called baud rate. So it means 9,600 signs per second are now transferred at the serial port. Okay. If I start up, if I finish start up, I want to print something, yeah. In it done. I'm using the command serial.println, print line, does it mean? So if the pin modes are assigned, it should write in it down on the serial monitor. Where do you find the serial monitor? The serial monitor can be found here on the top right corner of the window. Yeah. Tap it, serial monitor will open. Okay, I will now download the program. We will see what is happening on the serial monitor. Ah, there is written in it done. So we are indeed, we are at least here. Yeah. Of course the other things are not changed, so if I press the button, working, working, stuck. Stuck, stuck, stuck. So now we can make some outputs. Okay, that's pretty nice. So every time I press reset here, yeah, the the init done will be written on this uh, serial monitor because every time I release reset, the setup will be executed. And here you can see there is also written 9600 baud. If I choose something different, yeah, if I press reset now, then it's not understanding anything. Okay, it's clear because uh, if somebody is talking too fast for you to understand to, to listen, you would also understand nothing. Yeah. So these two portraits have to fit in order to read something useful here. Okay, in it done. So let's write some outputs. Yeah. 
So let's write the current step we are here. So we will, I will extend these uh, if statements. So I will simply output, I will now print. The difference between print and print, print line is that the print line will do a new line in the end. So we will write the next print will or print line will start at the next line. And the print is just printing the string. It's just printing the signs and that's it. Okay. I will write step change. Then I'm going to output the current step. And then copy. I will make such a little sign, uh, error, and the end I will print line this. Okay, and I will copy this, like I said, cover the inventor of copy and paste is great. Okay, now we should get outputs. Downloading. Let's wait until uh, in it done is written. Here we have it, in it done. Press the button. Okay, step change one to zero to one. Release the button. Step change one to two. This is also working. Now, press the button. Step change two to three. Aha! Release the button and now nothing is happening. Of course, I got, you see, here I've written four, so I'm waiting for four, yeah, so I'll change this to three, yeah, or oh, not 33, I'll change this to three, and this should work, of course, it's the fourth step, but the number three, I ain't got, okay, starting with zero, stupid. Download, in it done, let's see what is happening, press, okay, light, step one, release, step number two, still lighting, press, ah, now it's turned off, we are on step number three, release, we are back in zero. So now it is working as expected. Pretty good. Ah. Uh -huh. What do we have here? We have some, uh, we do have some bouncing of the switch. The switch is not making solid contact on the first click. It might do several, several uh, steps. And you see it on the output, we are running very fast through the steps. Yeah, this is because with one button press, button press, I maybe make two times a contact and the Arduino is that fast that it noticed it. Ah, there was again. Yeah. So that's a hardware issue. Yeah. We can also think about what what to do to debounce this. However, basically it is working. I only have one issue with this code. I mean there are some issues with this code. First, the basic things are a serial output is really slow. Yeah? Compared to the program execution, it's really slow. Even if 9600 sounds very fast, for a controller, this is an eternity. Okay, 9600 signs per second between those two seconds. I mean, we are milliseconds here. And we are talking about microseconds to execute a standard program. That, that, that's, that's a factor thousand. Yeah. So keep this in mind. If you have serial outputs, your program will probably run slower. Yeah. Right now it does not really matter. We don't notice. But if you do something which needs to be done very fast, then a serial print may cause issues. Okay. So that's one thing takes longer. Then, also the thing with the switch statement here is 
Yeah, what what if I want to introduce another step? Yeah, so if we want to maybe do something between case, case zero and one, something new. So I have to write here two, then I have to write here three, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this makes quite an effort. Yeah? Makes quite an effort. What is possible is that I, from the beginning, I, ch I don't use zero, one, two, three, I, I use zero, 10, 20, 30. Then, of course, I cannot just write current step plus plus. I write 10 equals 10 equals 20 equals 30. Okay. Then, if I want to introduce a new, I let's see what is happening. Download this now. In it done. Press the button, you see 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 0. Okay, so this is working. Uh, if we want to introduce something between, we could simply write case 5 break and just have, have to write here 5. Rather easy. Yeah. Also, but however, I had I need to change here also something. Yeah, working pretty well. You could also do it like this. Yeah, current step plus plus, like before. Yeah, but we will run into a dead end. We will run into a dead end, of course, because case 0 plus plus is case 1 did not find so however we will go to the default and we could also make a current step plus plus okay so if i download this now let's see what is happening in it done i press the button 0 to 1 i release the button 10 to 11. In the meantime, it counted from 1 to 10. This makes this default here. Yeah. 11, press 20 to 21, 30 to 0. And I just, if I want to add something here, I just have to write case 5, double, bo double bind, uh, break, and make my code here. Yeah. And at some point in time, I will reach case 5. I don't have to touch the other cases. However, it takes some time, yeah? again, the timing issue, it takes some time until we reach from 1 to 10. Yeah? We are running several times in this default loop here. In this case, you see, we are not noticing anything. Yeah? That would also be possible. Which is best? You have to decide. Yeah? Uh, if you want to have these serial outputs removed because you want to run your program faster, yeah, you can simply comment them. Okay, then they are not executed, and if you need them, you can put in them back in. Yeah? So it's going also rather fast. If I do not want to have these outputs, I will simply comment all those lines, download, and now the program is quite fast, okay. We will not see any output anymore, but it's still working, of course. And it's if some point in time I want to have my output back, I just uncomment this line. And I want to have only a certain output, I just have to uncomment this certain line. Okay. So that's that's the thing with the serial monitor. That's a pretty useful thing. You should use it to debug your code. Yeah. Bring some status messages or whatever. Okay. 
we also have those things. You also have those things, of course, in uh, in your script. There is the serial monitor. This described everything, print and print line, and so on. Uh, there is a second version of the program, and it's also described how to how to open this. Yeah. Okay. I hope this uh, usage of the serial monitor is clear. Please make use of it. Yeah, if you don't know what's going on, make some outputs. Look at the serial monitor. Should work very well. So far, thanks for your attention. Goodbye.